Greetings, ladies and metal gents, and welcome to this latest rendition of Tales, Tales from Outer from Space. Outer space. Outer space. Taken from the subreddit HFY, all the relevant links will be down below. And as always, I hope that you enjoy, and if you do, please consider supporting the channel. Now, on to the science fiction. Exchange written by Value Master. Breakfast is ready. Rar carefully navigated the stairway in the human home to partake in the morning meal. Cullum, the little human, and Trevor, the big human, were already at the table while the house queen bustled about in the food preparation area. Cullum flailed one of his soft human appendages at Rar. Over here, sit here by me. Rar complied and sat on the floor beside the human. It was a good floor, not near as much mud as he was used to, but very flat. Trevor chuckled. In the chair, you dingus. Again, Ra complied, sitting in the boxy wooden contraption intended to hold humans off the ground. He didn't understand why they didn't just stand. Why would you not state that in the first place? And, uh, what is a dingus? The house queen, or mom, as she was called by the human adolescents, came to the table with a platter. It means very smart person, Ra. Now, bacon and eggs, boys. Who wants toast? Mom sat down the platter, and Ra stared at the strange food. This is considered edible fare on this planet. The little human already had several pieces of food in his mouth. It's really good. Try it. The house queen laughed, an airy and joyful sound that made Ra flinch. It sounded like the hunting call of a cave banshee. There's a reason we volunteered as hosts for your species, Ra, dear. Compatible digestive tracts. The big human pushed a plateful towards Ra. Come on and eat, sleeping beauty. It won't kill you. Ra contemplated the plate, then made up his mind. It would be an honor to die for the glorious cause that is knowledge. He slammed his head face first into the plate of food in the ritualistic act of consumption. Callum burst in hysterics. Mom, he's doing it again, the head-banging thing. She laughed again, and he flinched again. He'd have to record the noise and send it back home. It truly was terrifying. An even bigger human came down the stairs. This was, uh, Dad, the worker drone for the Queen. Do I smell coffee? Good morning, Ra. Ra dipped his head at the drone. And good morning to you as well, House King. The worker drone chuckled, then spilled near boiling black liquid into his mouth. Flattery will get you nowhere. Half past six, boys. Better get going. Trevor nodded. Right, Ra, you're with me today. I wanted him first day. I told all my friends that. Yeah, well, that sucks. Ra, get your stuff and hop in the car. Mom! He's right, girl. It sucks. Have fun, boys. One gut wrenching near death experience later, Ra and Trevor arrived with time to spare at the human educational campus. Trevor had gotten upset with Ra after he had followed instructions and jumped into his car. It probably had something to do with the new hole in the vehicle's roof. However, the human had extracted revenge by nearly committing several acts of manslaughter in transit to the campus. Ra would probably walk home today. Trevor began speaking. Okay, so you're here to learn our junk and stuff, but people will still ask you questions. You technically don't have to answer anything, so if you are in an uncomfortable situation, wave at me and I'll come and bail you out. Raw stared at him. I will happily divulge any information asked of me, and to bail is to throw water out of something, correct? Yeah, but look, the human began to gesture with his hands. It probably was supposed to make things simpler. It didn't. If you feel unsafe, let me know. And I'll help you out. Unless that happens, just do whatever and try not to disrupt anything. Rar dipped his feelers as a sign of obedience. Yes. What kind of school was this that would put students in an unsafe position? Trevor looked at him oddly, then opened up a transparent rectangle and stepped inside. Ra walked forward, bashed into an invisible wall, then corrected his course. 
The human looked apologetic. That's called glass. We have a lot of it here. Ra checked his exoskeleton for damage. Thankfully, there was none. Thank you for your helpful warning. They walked through a series of cube-inspired rooms. The poor humans probably didn't have the funding or capacity to create proper learning environments. They came into a slanted room with lines of seats. The human led them to the center of the room, and they sat. Over the next ten minutes, a series of humans came in, animated and moving quickly. Many of them came close to Ra. He did not feel threatened, but was somewhat fearful that he would be stuck in what the humans referred to as a mosh pit. He was very thankful that there was no heavy metal objects in the room, or uh, large fans. Dude, he looks like an arbiter. No, 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 he looks like a mix between one of those huge beetles and a grasshopper. Ra spoke to the humans. Why do you compare me to your earth faller when I come from an entirely independent line of development? One of the students stepped closer. You look cool, man. I mean, Hadian. Xenos, space dude. Tenlan, Roar corrected him. Right. The human was quiet for a moment. Can I touch your shell? Ra's feelers tensed. My armor plating. You may touch. The Trevor human was looking angrily at the other human. Ra wondered why. He had no armor to be mistaken for a shell. Dude, it feels like fiberglass or resin, could we, uh? A learning Darwin, or teacher, as the human said, stepped into the room. That's enough. Leave the poor fellow alone. Take your seats. Ra gripped the edges of his chair. I'll introduce myself. A few of the human adolescents made strange noises. I am Professor Beamer, and welcome to our humble campus. Ra bowed. Thank you for accepting me into your learning sessions. The professor bowed as well. A human with a grasp of manners, it seemed. We are happy to accommodate you here, Mr... Um... The human stopped talking. Ra sat still, waiting for him to continue. Trevor leaned over and whispered, He's waiting for you to introduce yourself. Ra looked at him. Why are you speaking softly? The human's face fell into one of amusement before he raised his voice slightly above the normal volume level. What is your full name, Ra? You already know my full name. Have you forgotten already? Bro, Trevor blew air from his mouth. It's customary to state your name when meeting someone new. Ra looked at the waiting humans around him. Ah, this is strange. Only a select few know my name where I'm from. He stood. Hello, my name is Roborus Ben Rakan Lovashul. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Please call me Ra. Trevor nodded, pleased. Nailed it, bro. I do not have a hammer. Professor Beamer coughed, a human method to gain attention. It worked. The noise sounded like a quieter version of a cave in. Lovely. Welcome to the general education segment of our historical program. Today we'll be going over the Fertile Crescent. It all started in Mesopotamia, when... Ra listened. It was quite interesting, but more than that, he watched the humans around him. Their eyes flitted between their papers, tablets, cellular devices, and the professor as he spoke at length and showed examples of civilizations on screen. There was often dialogue between the teacher and the students, and they challenged his authority with questions... Rather than execution, the professor opted to answer their questions. A particular student, down and to the right of him, was engaged in some sort of survival learning simulation. The simulation caught his eye. It was brightly colored and featured balls trying to consume each other, splitting into different sizes and growing larger as the simulation progressed. It was obviously made to help the humans understand natural selection and the survival of the fittest, Ra was impressed by these tools of learning. And that is why the Egyptians, though revolutionary, suck. We'll pick up next week on the earliest recorded civilizations in Africa, then move on to South America. Pick a theory of migration and provide supporting evidence and opposing viewpoints. Ten pages, due Wednesday. The professor stared pointedly at the human playing the simulation. And I expect to see properly cited sources, Doug. There was no outward signal, but the humans all began packing up. 
Trevor spoke to him as he placed his learning instruments in his bag. That's one out of three classes for today. How are you feeling? Ra responded. The room was oddly quiet, as though the humans were listening to him. Oh, I'm feeling well. The subject matter was very interesting, and I can see why these Egyptians are held in such poor regard. All their monuments are falling apart. Chuckles filled the room. The professor spoke up. I'm glad you enjoyed the class, Ra. Ra bowed solemnly. You were enthralling. You must be quite the dingus. The professor looked crestfallen, while Trevor looked about to have an aneurysm. Ra must have said something wrong, though um, he couldn't place what. End of story. And that, my friends, concludes this video. I hope that you enjoyed, and if you do, please consider supporting the author, even by popping over and leaving a thumbs up or a nice comment just to show your appreciation for the story. However, if you wish to support this channel, there are links down below which will help immensely. I will see you all in the next one, and until then, I hope that you have a fantastic day. Cheers.